Hey everybody, uh, this is the build I've been working on recently. Um, this build is uh, partially sponsored by Bits Power in terms of the cooling. Um, the intention of this build, aside from you know personal use at home, was that uh, I would use it to also use some of the newer Bits Power products that are available. Um, so it has to been kind of a balance between showy and functional. Uh, normally, when you try to strike that balance, uh, you do have to make some sacrifices. So many show builds you guys see on Computex, etc., stuff like that. Uh, some of those show builds, you know, the, the main goal is just it lights up and it looks like it's working, right? So you don't have to really think about radiator space as much. You don't have to think about making sure that all the front panel connectors are connected because that's a lot of wires in standard case like this, right? So even for this case, I um, wanted to go a little extra mile. So instead of just a regular reservoir mount that I showed when I did the video for this reservoir, I made a distro uh, that I will show you guys just to hold the reservoir and clean up the loop so that it's very minimalistic. So <clears throat> before I do that, I just want to give a quick overview of the specs. This is uh, running on the Ryzen 9 5900X, 64 gigs of Trident Royal, um, X570 Hero Wi-Fi, uh, 3080 Strix uh, OC. It was white, but it comes with a black PCB, so if you're going to water block it, just get a black one. Don't pay the extra. Uh, the radiators are painted silver. They're Hardware Labs GTS 360s. Uh, all the fittings are Bits Power. Um, <clears throat> this is the Bits Power Royal Blue, uh, mixed with some black sparkle just to give that contrast. In terms of um, the tubing, this is Bits Power Chrome tubing. Uh, it comes in five colors Royal Blue, which I did add one here. Uh, it also comes in gold, uh, matte black. Um, and I think red, yeah, red's another color, and I, there's about five, and there's a black sparkle, so maybe six, but you can only get the lighter chrome one bent, pretty bent. Technically, you can bend these tubes yourself, but they will not bend to a 90, uh, because you will ruin the plating. They are brass, so you have to be, even when you're just cutting the tubing and working with the tubing, you have to be very careful because the finish is very thin. So you have, it gets easily scratched if you're not careful. So that's just something to work out if you guys uh, want to get into this tubing. Also, these fans are the uh, Bits Power Nautil 6 Stall 120 millimeter. They match the Royals nicely. That's pretty much why I picked them, I guess. Um, but let me turn this around and I'll show you guys the distro that I've done with this. So one second. So here's the back of the case. Um, this is the actual distro that was made for this case. Uh, this pretty much is a design that will fit any R6, uh, R7 possibly as well, and uh, S2 obviously. What I did was I removed the original drive bracket and I mocked up something that would fit in this space. It actually goes up to the top and on the very bottom of this case there are some bumps and rails which I also just bumps I had to cut out so this distro would sit flat. Uh, the distro just pretty much holds the reservoir in place and has a pump built in, a pump top you know uh, built into the distro so I can run a DDC here and this way it also cleans up the loop so it's just from the front you just see these two runs and that's it. I also have the one at the very front of the radiator. Um, I didn't have uh, one of those X-Flow radiators. If I did, I could probably have made it even cleaner because I would have had a run on the top. And yeah, I mean, I did make some modifications to this case to make this work. Um, for example, I had to take out the rail that holds the top cover. So my button popper does absolutely nothing. Uh, and on the wire back cover here, I had wanted to 
cover the entire back. But back to what I said about keeping this practical, I had to run all the front panel connectors, all the wiring through this little piece right here and then down the back, down over here. But some of the headers like the USB-C, it comes through under here and it raises it so much that there's no way I can tuck this in. And unless I create the entire motherboard back panel and remove the original one that came with the case, there's no way for me to sit this flush enough so that I can add that. You see, you can see there's just no space for this to be behind here. So this is flush, actually completely flush and level across. So it's better than nothing, but I guess if I were to take, take the case completely apart and redo it, I would probably remake a motherboard panel and then somehow incorporate this into it. But that, that's a whole load of extra. Um, this case does need to be somewhat practical, right? <laughs> So this disc drill is actually held up by a mounting point here, up here, a mounting point down here. And since there couldn't be a mounting point down here, there's a little small structure that holds it as well. Um, obviously it doesn't hurt to have a loop in place. Actually, this drill is not going anywhere even without stuff in there. Other than that, I um, just want to show you guys some of the components in here. So I'm going to hand hold the camera on this part. Uh, this bottom PSU cover was laser cut. So there's the hole in the back down here for the wiring and for over here to run the fitting through. And I did a rough cut for the tubing here. This tube actually was a little more out before um, the final positioning. Uh, here is the my temperature reader. Uh, I know some people like to have an inline one, but Bits Power sells this one that goes right onto the GPU block. It's just a much cleaner look, uh, in my opinion. It does have a little graph thing too that'll show you your temperature over time. And it kind of cycles through. There's a little button you can press down and you can customize what it shows you. The RAM will light up white eventually when it boots up fully, I guess. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. Um, a lot of people ask, when you have two radiators, yeah, my fan here got disconnected. <laughs> Uh, somewhere along the way, I guess. So I have to fix that. Um, but yeah, uh, people ask when you have two 360s, where's your drain? Uh, well, if you want to keep your drain in a position where no one can see it, because usually they don't look that appealing, and you have a full PSU cover like this, your drain's going to be in the bottom, right? So my drain's in the bottom. Uh, in order to drain this, I will have to remove the PSU to get it to drain, but not a big deal. I do maintenance. I take everything out anyway. So, oh yeah, one more thing. I'm using the BizPower Dual VGA bracket. This bracket supports four PCI slots, but technically only two expansion cards. So behind this, this card right here, uh, you'll see in the quick put together, I have my uh, sound card back there. So this way you get functionality of not just having a vertical mount and then losing every other expansion slot. Um, that's kind of, I mean, I guess, especially with these days with NVMe cards and et cetera like that, NVMe is becoming more accessible and cheaper. It, it doesn't really make sense to do a vertical mount and then kill off all your slots, right? So granted this case did have a built-in vertical mount. I just didn't like the way it looks because it's up against the glass and there's just too much separation between the foreground and background uh, in terms of aesthetics. Um, but if you were on air, for example, and you put your air cooler here, that's just not a good idea. In a lot of cases, if you look, are two slots, right? So with the newer 30 series cards, there are almost three slots, 2.5 to three and a half even. You're gonna completely block your airflow by putting it vertical. So, it still makes sense sometimes to buy an aftermarket bracket like this one and, you know, use that. Um, other than that, just a quick talk about this build. Uh, I will be doing another one soon uh, in an NWAY H frame. Uh, kind of like a very pretty test bench, we'll put it that way. It'll have lots of custom work. Uh, it's supposedly sponsored by NWIN and EK. Um, it's a little bit slow getting stuff in. I have all the hardware for it already. It's just a matter of getting in the case and some of the blocks that aren't out yet. So if you want to see that, stay subscribed 
and I will do a video of it as I go along rather than you know when it's finished uh, oh if anybody's curious about how this was done right here this two-tone this is just uh, originally it was cut with clear blue and then I just use knife tape and matte black vinyl and you get that dual tone look uh, these little decals over here those are just a vinyl cutter vinyl cut you know with a vinyl cutter um, all right other than that thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned